Hoi Archer here. Today I want to show you how to build a PVC pipe quiver. There are a lot of PVC pipe builds on PVC pipe quiver builds on YouTube right now. A lot of them are pretty much the same design with some variations here and there. I'm kind of taking a totally different approach on how I'm building it. So I figured I'd share that with you today. I will be filming this in a two-part video. And I'm filming this in what I like to call part-time real-time. So what I mean by part-time real-time is I, I'm already actually halfway through my project and I'm just going to take, take you guys through the steps on how to get from the beginning to where I'm at now. And to start this project, what you're going to need is a 3-inch uh, diameter. Um, not sure what schedule this is, but I know this is a 3-inch diameter sewer pipe PVC. Um, you're going to also need a 3-inch end cap. Great stuff insulation foam. I'll explain why I use the insulation foam in a little bit. You can actually use any foam you feel like using, whatever you got around the house, if not. But there's a, a specific reason on why I use this. A heat source, a heat gun. I use a heat gun. You, you probably could get away doing it with this on the stove. I haven't tried it yet, but anything's possible. And heat resistant gloves. I'm using my motorcycle Gore-Tex Gore gloves. Okay, so to do this project, what you're going to need to do first is you're going to need to figure out what length you want your quiver to be at. So I do a standard 32 inch arrow, so I make mine as such. So you basically want to mark off around that much above your quiver or your pipe, mark it, cut it to what you need it to be at. After you cut it, what you're basically going to do is you're going to take it, clean off the edges, sand it, do whatnot, take your great stuff, shake it up. You're going to measure approximately, I go about 5 inches, but that again is however you guys, how much insulation foam or foam you want to put in there. I put 5 inches because I like to actually stick my arrows in, into the foam, and that's another reason I use the great stuff, is because after constant re-sticking of your arrows into the foam, your foam will deteriorate. And basically, you, I, what I do is I remove the cap, dig out the foam, and I still got the can, re-foam it up, let it dry, recap it, your quiver is good to go. So, off subject here anyway, you're going to fill up your, you're going to fill up your hole with your great stuff. You want to do about 50% of whatever depth you go. So if it's 5 inches, you're going to go about 2 inches of insulation foam because it will expand out. If you do it good, you shouldn't have to cut anything off. If you overflow it, you're going to end up having to chop it down to size. So after you're done with that, let's get this out of the way. You let your foam dry. Your next step will be to start heating this pipe. So, put your gloves on. What you're going to do now is you're going to take a piece of stick here. I got some wood. I'm actually using my jig for this, my archery jig, which is right here. What you're going to do is first you're going to heat up your pipe all the way around until it becomes fairly pliable. And as it becomes pliable, what you want to do is you want to press and kind of shape this into an, I guess, oblong shape, oval, ovalish, oblong. I'm not quite sure which one, but you want to kind of get it to that, that point. After you, you kind of get it to your your shape that you're looking for. You let this cool off and then what you want to do now is you want to measure approximately about an inch to two inches down on your pipe. So your pipe will look like this. You'll measure one to two inches, mark it around, heat up from this point to this point until it becomes completely pliable where you can just take your two fingers and smash it in. You want to be able to smash the whole thing around this is where the gloves come in, into play. Once you heat that up, you fold 
everything down to your marker. So if your marker is an inch, two inches, whatever you decide to make it, you fold it in and you crimp it down and you kind of just hand shape this oval piece here. The, the material will cool, so as you're doing this, you're going to want to reheat, press, reheat, press, reheat, press, and you'll eventually get to this shape. There's an also a little subtle thing I've done to this is I've heated up approximately three inches, three inches past my fold mark, and I've actually heated up a two inch marker here. The reason I did that is I heated it up the same way just to be pliable enough and I basically gave it a little chokehold. The reason for the chokehold is when you put your lashings on or your rope or however you decide to hold this, the rope will have a little divot to get stuck in. So when you tie it off, the divot will be in place. If you don't do that, what will happen is you'll have to either tie it really tight, pretty much you have to tie it extremely tight. Because if not, what will happen is this. You'll end up getting slippage. You can kind of see how when it gets to this point, it stops. It doesn't want to go nowhere. That's the point of this. So after you get to that point, you want to take your cap. You want to go with a little drain hole, um, a drill to make a drain hole. You want to kind of make it somewhere around here, here, and in the center. Reason for this is if you take this into the field and it gets wet, fills up with water, you got to have something to exit out of. Then basically, you screw this guy right on the back. And that's part one of how to build a PVC pipe quiver. A little side note on the reason I'm actually leaving it flat down here is because if I'm in my backyard and I want to shoot with my neighbor's kids and I don't want to wear this, I can actually sit this down on the cement and it stands freely so I can just drop the arrows in and we can shoot. If I want, when the straps go on after, it can either be worn directly on the back or I can slide it down directly to the side hip if I want to shoot at the range. Well, that's part one, like I said, and I'll be getting back to you on part two as soon as I can. See you guys later.